All right, good afternoon. Happy July 1st. I love new months because new months are like fresh beginnings, fresh starts. Although my month began pretty crazy. So um, my youngest daughter this morning, I know I look kind of just cluttered and that's what it feels like my day, what happened with my day. But my youngest daughter unfortunately burned herself very, very bad. So we spent the, the morning of today um, in the doctor's office trying to treat that burn. But we just finished eating some blizzards from Dairy Queen. Um, because we're home, we're, she's safe, we're, everything's back to normal. And now I get to just do this live that I wanted to come and chat with you guys about today. So first off, in the beginning of a month, like this is my favorite time because, sorry, I got a phone call. All right, so in the beginning of the month, it's my favorite time because I think that in the beginning of the month, it's an opportunity for us to really get a fresh start. You know, just like we love New Year, we love that New Year has a lot to bring. We love that New Year has um, that idea of that fresh start. New months are much like that. And I posted something earlier, or it was late last night, like at midnight. Um, and I basically said, if you wait for the new year to hit, to start setting goals, then you're already too late. And what I mean by that is one of the things that I'm really committed to at the end of every single month, I always check in with myself and I'll ask myself, what worked well this month? What didn't work so well? Where did I show up for myself this month? And where did I fall short and why? And when I start to reflect on these questions, it allows me to evaluate the goal that I'm working on to one, see if it's something that I should still be working on or two, um, if it's something that I shouldn't be working on at all, right? If I decide that it's something that I should work on, then I determine, okay, how do I need to shift it? How do I need to change it? How do I need to make room for it? That sort of thing. Um, so one of the things I'm sure that you guys have probably all heard of SMART goals, right? We have SMART stand, the, the acronym for SMART. For those that don't know, the S is specific, meaning like your goal is very specified. It's not like a, a broad goal, like, oh, I want to lose weight. It's more of like, I want to lose 20 pounds. Um, the M stands for measurable. So how can you make the goal something that you can measure? Um, the A stands for attainable. So is it something that's actually within your reach? Sorry, my kids leave these napkins. Come pick these napkins up, girls. Um, so is the A is, is the goal something within your reach? Is it attainable? Meaning that I'm a person that I don't, I'm not an avid runner. So I'm not going to say that I'm going to run a marathon. Kaylin Cameron, come pick these up. Um, I'm not going to say that I'm going to run a marathon tomorrow because that's not attainable for me. But maybe somebody that has been training forever, they can say, oh, yeah, I'm going to run a marathon tomorrow because that's well within their reach. That's attainable. Then we have relevant. So how is it relevant to you? Um, a, a quick story for me. I remember when... Um, my aunt became, my uncle's wife, she became like a health food coach and she was really about like, you know, being more informed about what you're eating and what you're putting in your body and taking care of your body with your food and all these things. And she lectured me for days about how dairy is like terrible for you. Now, I don't drink milk, but I know milk is in cheese, but I adore cheese and I love cheese on everything. Like I love me some cheese pizza. I love cheese. I, just, I will get a block of cheese and cut it in, a, you know, squares and eat it. And she kept trying to tell me, no cheese, no cheese. Cheese is bad for you. You should set a goal to get rid of cheese, to move cheese out of your diet. But I wasn't in touch with that goal. Um, well, fast forward a few years later when I had my daughter, that goal became relevant to me. Meaning that I felt like, okay, yes, I need to get rid of cheese because this is, this is not only important for me, it's healthy for my daughter. Okay? So making sure the goal is relevant. I see a lot of times people set goals that are only relevant to other people, not necessarily something that they're excited about, not something they want to do. Um, and then the T is timely. So put a timestamp on your goal. Don't say, I'm going to run a marathon one day. Say, I'm going to run a marathon at the end of six months or whatever it may be. Like put a timestamp on it. So that was a very brief summary of what a SMART goal is. For me, I approach goals with a SMARTER acronym, okay? So I use those same strategies when I identify goals. My goal is very specific. I want to write my next book in 30 days. Um, that's a very specific goal, right? It's specific to me. It's measurable because I have the 30 days so I can kind of touch base with it. Um, it's attainable because I've done it before. I know other people that have done it as well within reach. Um, it's relevant. It matters to me. And then the time is at 30 days. Okay. So that is a, an example of how to make it relevant. I mean, how to make a smart goal. Okay. For me, I take it a step further and this is where I think people fall off and this is what I want to share. So stick with me here. So when we set these smart goals, we have these big desires. We have these big passions. We have these things that we want to accomplish and we have this goal, but then 
when thing when life gets in the way we start to fall off and this is where the smart tur comes in the er so e stands for evaluate when we set goals we just keep saying like i'm gonna just keep going after my goal i'm just gonna keep doing this and sometimes the actions that we're taking or it isn't getting us any closer to our goals. Sometimes the action that we're taking is actually impacting or impeding our success with our goals. And so this is why it is pivotal that we evaluate. So you ask yourself, what's going well? What's not going well? What's working? What do I need to shift? And this is the neat thing. When you put a timestamp on your goal, you're able to evaluate it more effectively. If you don't have a timestamp on your goal and you're like, I hope to lose weight or I hope to write this book or I hope to save this amount of money and there's no timestamp on it, you don't have that sense of urgency, you don't have that passion, you don't have the desire to, to check in with yourself to push, right? But when you have a timestamp on it, you reflect. So for me, like I mentioned earlier in the video, at the beginning of each month, I'm setting new goals. I'm reviewing old goals and determining how I want to work with them. But I, I evaluate those goals. So usually around the 29th of the month or so, I sit down and I write out what went well with this goal. Where did I do well? Where did I show up for myself? Where did I fall short? And here's the thing. When I evaluate, I'm willing to make shifts, okay? Because a lot of times we can't reach our goals because we're doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. Thank you so much. Hi, Robin. It's good to see you. Hope you're having a great summer. Um, so a lot of times we're setting goals expecting a different result. So when we're setting goals and we're expecting a different result, or we're doing the same thing and we're expecting a different result, what is that? That's the definition of insanity. You cannot do the same thing over and over and over again expecting a different result. So when you want to shift your goal, when you want a different outcome with your goal, you have to evaluate it to see what's working and what's not. Um, I put a post up earlier this week and I talked about feed your, feed your focus and starve your distractions. So take a mon moment and consider what's distracting me from my goal and pushing me away from it and what's allowing me to feed my focus, what's allowing me to stay centered and focused on what matters matters that's getting me closer to it and this is why evaluation is key um, research says I want to say it's like J June or January 19th or something um, January 19th is, is labeled National Quitters Day and it's labeled National Quitters Day because by January 19th most people have already fallen short most people have already thrown in the towel most people have already given up on their goals by January 19th because it's hard work they're not evaluating what's working and what's not working but when you reflect and you're like you know what I'm gonna take I'm gonna take I'm gonna be more intentional about evaluating it more regularly. So let's say you touch base and you're like, okay, I'm gonna evaluate my goal every single Sunday. So on Sunday, you're like, yes, I, you know, Sunday I did great. Um, I did great on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But on Thursday, I fell off with my goal. Well, what happened on Thursday? Oh, Thursday, that's right. My family came in town and I, you know, or I forgot to put this on my calendar. Or I got distracted because I did this. When you're able to reflect, you know where you fell short. And then you can also know where you need to make shifts and changes. So evaluation is key. You cannot set goals and you cannot keep taking the same action, expecting different results if you're not evaluating if those actions and if those steps are getting you closer to accomplishing that goal, okay? So you gotta evaluate it regularly. And more importantly, you have to be willing to make the much needed shifts to be successful with the goal. And then finally, I said smarter. So evaluate is the E, the R is redo. So after you evaluate, you determine what works, you decide that you need to do more of that, determine what didn't work, what your distractions were and how you can starve those and move those out of your way then you move into the r how can you redo this goal but more intentionally more successfully i talk to people all the time that are like i've been wanting to write a book for years but i gave up on it because it didn't work with me it didn't fit in my schedule didn't work for my life or all these excuses it's not that the goal was wrong right maybe the approach was wrong we don't always have to shift or change the goal if we change the way that we go after the goal it's still very much so within our reach okay so i wanted to come and share this with you super briefly sometimes i can get long-winded because i get super passionate about it but I wanted to share this because this is a new month. This is a new start. This is a new beginning. There's so many things that we have to look forward to. And it's tempting to be to throw, be thrown off course with everything going on with the second, with this crazy corona number that's going up, with the race riots, with everything going on. I know personally how easy it's, how tempting it is to be thrown off track. But I also know how important it is for you to prioritize the things that matter to you in your life. And so if you have a goal that you've been working on, if you're challenged at how to go about it, and if you're looking for strategy, walk through this. Use the smarter system to put yourself in a position to be smarter at approaching your goal and in turn be more successful with it. And if you're looking for like more of that one-on-one -on -one support, DM me, let me know. I am like 
a nerd when it comes to goal setting. I'm really passionate about it. Um, I've seen people that have worked on goals for years that haven't made any progress come work with me and been able to make tons of progress simply because we shift the systems and the strategies and, and really the mindset um, behind it. And that's something that I'm really passionate about because I want to see people live, live a life that they love, not a life where they're resentful that they're seeing all these people on social media flourishing, not a life where they're like, why can that happen for this person but it can't happen for me, or not a life that, oh, well, it's me and I'm, you know, I can't ever have anything good, but a life that they love and a life that they're living more intentionally and that's possible. There's nothing special about the people I've worked with. There's nothing special about me. It can happen for any of us, right? So go back to this video. I know I said a lot, pull out some notes, pull out whatever, write it down, but I want you to really approach your goal more intentionally, not with like a haphazard approach where you're like, I hope that this goal lands on my lap. I hope that I'm successful, but approach it with a more, um, with a more successful a more planned out strategy and watch how, how much progress you actually make with it. So if you're catching the replay and the replay, comment below. Let me know that you're watching the replay. Also, let me know what goal that you're working on this month um, and what you will accomplish what you will and I can go on I'm about to go on a, or I can go on forever about that but one another thing that I learned is a lot of times um, the way that we talk about our goals is almost like they're without our out of our reach too so change the way you talk about your goals so even today when you watch this replay or when you're watching it live with me right now comment below and write your goal for July as if it already happened so say I Dr. Nicole will publish my 10th book I, Dr. Nicole, did publish my 10th book. Write that goal below as if, it, as if it already happened and affirm yourself about that regularly. Speak that goal into existence. Remind yourself that it's well within your reach and that you are capable and more than capable of accomplishing um, this goal. So that's what I have for you. Again, happy July. I hope that everyone's July started off a little bit more, a little calmer than mine did this morning. Um, and I will chat with you guys later.